This conference will now be recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, welcome to the September 28th, 2021 Tenino City Council work session. Uh, my camera doesn't seem to be turning on tonight, so I'm sorry. Uh, you're not going to get to see my pretty face, but you can hear me talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't necessarily have anything on the work session, but we have some agenda items that we could bring up and we could also do our reports. <clears throat> so we'll use our time wisely. Uh, former state representative Beth Dolio offered to join us tonight since uh, the stuff dealing with the home fund was a bill that she wrote while she was working in the legislature. And it's, uh, it's something coming up uh, on on in all throughout Thurston County, and uh, I can only I can only answer so much. So uh, I figured there might be some questions, and there is no better person to uh, get them from. So she will be joining us tonight. However, she was going to donate blood or plasma or both. So she's going to join us when she's done, and hopefully there's still enough blood and plasma left in her body to be able to get the brain to function. So we'll have to tease her about that when she's on here. Um, and I don't think I violated any HIPAA laws telling that because I'm not her health care provider. Any, uh, any want to be attorneys out there. So we can, <laughs> we can begin. I'd rather talk about that when she's here, because I, I think there are some interesting points to consider and some things for us to talk about. Uh, you bet. But, what's that, John? You bet. Yeah, but we can we can just go right into some of our reports and uh, maybe she'll get here before the end of the work session. So I do not see, oh, and then uh, Rachel's not joining us because she is feeling under the weather. She said a child sneezed in her face at, at, uh, when she was at work. So there's that. Uh, is there a member of the Chamber of Commerce? Is, is George with us to provide a report? Not yet. Okay. Uh, then uh, Fire District 12. Uh, we're going through the same kind of stuff that everybody else through the st that the state is with uh, this with this argument over the HIPAA rules and uh, who needs to get vaccinated and who doesn't need to get vaccinated. Uh, this is just nobody has clear definition exactly what it is, except that if you don't have uh, at least your first round of shots by a particular day. Uh, October then, 18th. Yeah, if you don't have the first shot by at least then, uh, you are probably gonna be out of a job. Uh, at present, the last I heard, there was over 55,000 uh, people that are suing the state over this. Uh, I, don't I, mean, think it's, I don't think it's not 55,000. So that's what I heard. Anyway, yeah, no, there's a, there was a lawsuit filed in Walla Walla that was it was it was like 500, I think. It was it was a large number. Okay, but whatever the number is, there's there's at least one suit being being filed against uh, the governor for his uh, lack of flexibility on this. I mean, if you come right down to it. It, to me, it's a very big insult to everybody that's been working since day one of this of this uh, whole thing. And now all of a sudden, uh, we're, we're being tossed aside. Uh, we spent our time out there. I, I am considered uh, one of the essential employees and I was out there with everybody just like everybody else was. And now we're being tossed aside and saying, uh, well, you're not important anymore. If you don't get this, you don't have a job. Uh, so th this is not going to be good. We found a way to protect our guys, the ones that don't want to take the shot for whatever reason. Uh, so we'll be the our guys uh, will be OK. I know some of them have decided to go ahead and take the shots. Uh, some of them still haven't done that. They have some time. Uh, we also were doing something uh, for our volunteers. Uh, and if we can pull this off, we'll be the first one in the state to do it. And this is to help with retention. It's We're going to set up a fund and have it set aside. And uh, we'll figure out exactly what the uh, buy-in part will be. It won't cost the volunteers anything, but the longevity. Uh, they have to stay with the department for a certain amount of time. And the money that we put in there, 
plus any interest when they do leave for whatever reason they'll be able to get that money back uh and the uh, the whole idea is that to keep people with the department a little bit longer uh especially on a volunteer basis uh, but if they don't stay long enough that's money that just gets rolled over to the next volunteer so it's it's almost one of those type of things once it gets started it's going to be pretty good for them and it's not going to cost the department a whole heck of a lot of money to, to start with or if somebody does uh is able to take advantage of that uh it won't be a whole lot to have to replace the replace monies with okay all right thank you john thank you uh, Councilman Burrell Callahan. Uh, i i see that uh the former representative beth dolio has joined us and i, I thank her for joining us so I'll, I'm just going to open that up and she can kind of she can brief us on what the home fund is and what the proposal is that we're looking at and, uh, you know, what, what that means to Tanayano, what Tanayano could do. And uh, like I said, she was the sponsor of the bill. I believe she wrote the bill. So uh, we're pretty lucky to be able to get it right from the horse's mouth. Everybody's just hopeful that you didn't give too much blood that you don't have enough to go to your brain and be able to explain it. I know. Yeah. Uh, no, well, it's well, Beth. well, today, so no. did they give you your cookies? I did, I got my cookie and my potato chips. There you go, <laughs> All the right. best so part, right? thank you. Well, great. Um, it was just fortuitous. I was reaching out to um, Mayor Fournier today to just uh check in about this because I know the county is considering it, and he said you were having a work session tonight. and uh, that I could join along and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so, so uh, in 2020, um, after the city of Olympia had taken this measure to the ballot and it passed overwhelmingly, and I had seen that sort of happen, um, that happened in 2017, and it took about three years to to uh, wage a campaign to you know pass this measure and considering the state of crises that um, our communities are experiencing across the state, um, I, I thought it would be uh, good to offer cities uh, a funding tool that they could enact councilmanically if they so chose. Um, and so the, the basically the bill, it's uh, House Bill 1590, does allow for a councilmanic vote to increase the sales tax one tenth of one percent and create an ongoing home fund is what we call it in uh, Olympia in this community. It's called different things in other communities, but um, and it provides an ongoing locally controlled source of funding that municipalities can use to support housing the capital, the operations and maintenance, and the services. So it's a very flexible tool. Um, uh, it is, you can buy land with it. That was changed in last session. You can also purchase existing buildings and renovate those to become supportive housing. A couple of sidebars on it. It does have to provide housing for people at the 60% area median income and below, and at least 60% of the funds that are raised need to go towards housing. The other 40% can or cannot, it's, it's up to um, the municipalities and how they wanna use it, can also support behavioral health, chemical dependency, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, prior to this bill passing, the cities of Ellensburg and Port Angeles, Anacortes, and Olympia passed at the ballot. And since then, um, the city of Spokane, East Wenatchee and Wenatchee, um, Tacoma, the King County area, Whatcom County, the city of Vancouver, they've all passed it councilmanically. I think I'm forgetting a few. A number of other communities are um, in the process of the same thing that our community is looking at. Does this make sense for our community? And as you know, the um, county commissioners have requested, you know, to to hear from people from throughout the county. And so 
I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'll start it off. Uh, it says here on the on the the letter that we've gotten from the county that Thurston County is looking at implementing a countywide home fund, accepting Olympia because they've already passed that. Uh, from what you were saying, it was a city by city. Uh, so I'm not sure if we're talking uh, apples to apples over here. Yeah, so so um, it the county is considering doing it, and it and if and the county does by statute have the ability to implement it countywide, which would impact to Nino, which is why they're asking for your support. Cities can also do it. In fact, you have the option of doing this yourself and um, you know maintaining complete control over over the dollars that come in. Um, I did take a look at that today when when uh, the mayor and I were talking. Um, it looks like you you would generate somewhere in the neighborhood between thirty and forty thousand um, if you took this action separate from the county. You would need to do that before they do it um, if they do in fact do it um, in order for that to to in order for you to um, maintain control of those funds. So it is the same apples to apples. Okay, so is there a way? uh for for Tanano not to do this and yeah. if the county does for us to opt out because when you look at when you look at north county compared to south county that's including yum because yum had a problem about three years ago and they took care of it on their own they didn't get any help from anybody else they they got they got whatever they did they wow. did in-house period okay Tanano, bucota rainier we have no no uh ability to do anything with what's happening in olympia you're at the capitol you can look out the window and you can actually see down by the lake and that's just one of them we didn't have anything to do with that not one bit we didn't have a, a say whether they could stay there or whether they had to move so why are we being expected to say yes to something like this well there are many reasons that we have um, a homeless crisis and you know it's it's not just the people who are you know housing programs and uh, throughout the region don't just address um, the folks that you see down at the lake we have like 800 kids in this county that are considered mckinney vento kids meaning that they have unstable homes so we want to we want to be able to have the resources to interact with those families who are uh you know falling off the luck you know lost their job and kids are moving around from sofa to sofa or are um you know sleeping in their parents car um and you know intervene with that so that they don't end up on the streets and we don't continue to create the problem that that you see and that you know that, that is so hard to to deal with so it's not just about that particular issue of the encampments that we see. The, the problem is much deeper. You know that the, the housing is very unaffordable. It's very challenging. Someone who's trying, I just was on a phone with uh, someone who does chemical dependency work and they were like, yeah, some people come in, we do the treatment with them and then they don't have a place to go when we discharge them. And, and yet they're really making an effort at getting clean and sober and yet they don't have a home to go to and it makes it very challenging to stay um, with the regime that they have just been through with the treatment so i think there's and then there's our veterans you know i i am also on the board of quixote communities and we just opened a 35 unit uh, tiny house project in ording washington that is housing 35 previously unhoused veterans um, and I, I think as a community Together we can do better in making sure that our veterans and our families have options that um, they don't currently have with the housing shortage and, um, and, and, and all the issues that we are dealing with, COVID, all that stuff right now, the pandemic. And um, so that this, this will help to do that. And it will also help to provide the services that folks need to get themselves up off their feet and open a new chapter in their lives see I, I would have to disagree with you with respect uh just a little background for the last uh, year and a half almost two years 
I have been out every night working with homeless. The children that you say that are out there, I don't see them. What I do see is a bunch of people that have chosen to live, and I'm not talking about just by the lake. It's throughout Thurston County, and where the major uh, major uh, clusters are, are in North Thurston County. All the groups that you just mentioned right there, uh, those are com those are completely different groups of people. They need different types of help, and they can be helped. But, but, but by lumping them all into just this one little thing right here, and then having to split that pie up all the, with all those different groups, you're not going to be able to help anybody, but you'll be taking a whole lot of tax dollars away from a city like Tonino, because as you said, 30, maybe $40,000 a year. Doesn't and that's not very... taking any money from us. Let's, I mean, so like, no, no, no. The, the, if, you know, if keep not, it general. Like, Beth uh, is not taking any money from us. Beth is here to share information with us, and she understands the issue uh, on a lot of different angles. So I just, just make, so do I. Okay, I know, I know, I know. But just when you throw out the U's, that you know, I know maybe it's a Jersey thing. But be a little soft. You taking all the money. So bear with me on this. <laughs> Continue. So, so bear with me on that. Uh, one of the biggest things, uh, uh, Beth, you and I met a couple of times uh, over the last few years uh, through the Transportation Policy Board. One of the things that we did about 20 some odd years ago was a vision of reality. One of the main things that we looked at was housing affordable housing. The problem isn't so much affordable housing, it's, a f it's how to afford to build housing. If you buy, buy up, if we take that money and we buy up properties to rehabilitate them, that's even more expensive. I know because in my youth, I used to do a lot of that stuff. Uh, I won't tell you what they used to call the, the remodel guys, uh, but it, <laughs> it, it, once you open up that wall, any estimate that you thought was there is just right out the window because you don't see the problems that are, that the house has uh, until you open that wall. So, are, are you, is this a metaphor? Or are you being literal? I don't. I, I kind of stopped I'm listening. Being literal. I'm being okay. literal. Once you open up a wall on on uh, a remodel, uh, most of the time you don't know what's behind that wall, so your estimate is a guess. Uh, so. When you're talking about affordable housing, how are you going to make affordable housing without reducing a lot of the barriers that builders have? And we we came up with this 20 some odd years ago with the vision of reality, and it hasn't changed one little bit because prices go up year in and year out. And the only way that uh, something can be built is if something can be paid for. I, I, I do think that there's some issues with our building codes. But that's, I, I, you know, that's a different issue. I mean, uh, yes, when we're talking about affording, affordable housing, but we're not going to solve that right now. I think just practically speaking, the, the county and Lacey and Olympia and Tumwater are pushing very hard for more investments to be made in affordable housing. They're asking, they're, and this is going on in other negotiations, that South County give up 50% of the CDBG funds and that it be put into affordable housing projects they're asking that the home this home fund tax be uh that well they want to know they want to know what we think and that there there are options but what they put on the table was uh give us a letter of support or tell us you don't like it and essentially oh, yeah. and uh but they can count pass through a councilmatic vote so just the commissioners can vote a majority of them to make this uh, what would you say? What is it? A uh, one percent of one tenth of one percent. One tenth of one percent yeah. that would go on countywide. I, I think it's going to happen. I think it's inevitable. I don't think that a letter from Tonino saying that uh, anything that you said, John, is going to matter. You know, this is an issue for them, and they they want to they want to create these these funds. However, uh, and I really appreciate Beth uh, proffering this is that in that bill, it does allow for Tonino to do their own thing. We have the, the lowest sales tax around. So you know, one one percent on our sales tax is nothing. It, if, if uh, you know, it, maybe, maybe neither of, you know, it's like, what do you, you know, when you're faced with the choice of let them throw it upon us or, uh, you know, carve out our own and have our own 
locally managed home fund, I think that that's a better alternative for us. And that's something that where we could create our own home fund, we could use it for different projects in the community, uh, housing rehab, there, there's all, you know, we can, we can get crazy and come up with all kinds of ideas, but you know, we could also collect it and may, I don't know, maybe in the future we join in if we, if a different council values a countywide approach. But my sense is that this council does not like the countywide approach and that, you know, so it is, I think it's cool that there is an alternative. Well, if you, you guys probably don't remember, but about two years ago, I brought this up and I warned that the county was going to try to pass a vote. Uh, so that everybody in Thurston County was going to pay for the homeless problems in North County. Well, here it is. I think it's a bad idea. Tonino, Bucota, Rainier, we didn't have anything to do with what's happening in North County. We What we did do is try to warn. I know I did because you could see it coming down from Seattle. I went up to Seattle about five years ago. It was nice, it was pretty, it was worth going to. A year later, you had people saw living up underneath the, uh, uh, underneath the bridges and within one year. Now it's considered up there to, and they call it uh, a homeless, in, the homeless industrial market, where you got a whole lot of people that are making a whole lot of money and nothing's getting any better. Well, and if we, if we, if we do create our own home fund, we're not going to be create. We're not going to be contributing to the military industrial complex of homelessness, or what, you know, whatever that was. But, but you know, I, I do think that our peers and our colleagues throughout the county would appreciate us creating, you know, some type of effort to work on affordable housing issues. Uh, there is no doubt that there are people moving into Thurston County, and you know. There, there probably is some opportunity for us to do things better here, housing-wise. Where there's vacant land that could be purchased, and there could, and you could work with a group like Habitat for to build a house there. There's that. That's absolutely appropriate. I think. Let me, let me jump in there on the Habitat thing. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people through Habitat now. Chief, he since he's on the board, he can go ahead and and uh, verify this. Uh, even to build a habitat house with all the free stuff that they get, they're still looking at a hundred and a half, two hundred thousand dollars for one of those houses. Just the taxes alone, oh, yeah. the, just the taxes on that house alone will remove a whole lot of people that could have taken advantage of habitat. The taxes take them back out of it because they can't afford I, really taxes on it. I'm not so, here to solve the homelessness issue or ha the housing crisis. No, no, no. Uh, what you guys don't to understand are, is if that, we don't look at what the problems are, we're never going to be able to solve. No, I know, but right now I want you guys to understand that I believe the county is going to force a sales tax on us, and then that money will go into county coffers for what they want it to go to. Or we can pass an ordinance and we can collect our own sales tax and keep it in our own coffers. And then Tonino can choose its flavor. Or here's another option. North Thurston County gets a whole lot of sales tax out of South Thurston County because that's where the majority of shopping is. North Thurston County can leave South Thurston County alone. Then the cities that are here, the towns and the cities that are here can decide whether they want to take one of the, whether they, they want to enact something like this because they think it's a true need. You can try to fight that battle, but you know it's not going to work. Or just leave that money in the in the our residents' pockets. It, I'm I'm just trying to be practical. If I mean, okay, every you know, you can you can plant your feet in the mud and you can say no, 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 I don't like this, and then just get rolled over. Or we can you know we can take it upon ourselves and control. That's that's what I see as the options. I, I think if you do if you do nothing or you choose a, a strategy that is not going to win, then you're just choosing to, to lose. I don't, that's, a cough, that's called a Kafka trap. And I don't, I don't agree with that assumption because I'm not saying that we don't do something. At this present point, we have some homeless coming in, but they don't stay here very long because we don't have services for them. All the services that they want are in North County. 
Tanino, Rainier, and Bucota do pay a whole lot in sales tax in North County that gets overlooked. And we've been told this time and time again since I've been on council since 96, well, that money doesn't really count. Well, yeah, it does. We pay a whole lot. So if North Thurston County wants to go ahead and put this in, let them put this in. In Olympia, whenever I have to shop in Olympia, I'm paying into that because of the sales tax. Okay, so you're you're just you're saying let them let them do the the John O'Callaghan says let them pass their the county commissioners let them pass their councilmatic vote for the home fund. That is your position. I got it. No, for North Thurston. Tonight has another option. Tonight has an option to write a letter of protest. They also have a letter, uh, they can write a letter of support. They can also choose to enact their own and, and subvert the effort. And then they retain uh, they retain the ability to use those funds as Tenino needs. Those are the options. That's a coffee Does anybody crack. else have any comments or questions? While we have Beth here. Thanks for being here, Beth, I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Let me, uh, is there a way? I'm not terribly familiar with GoToMeeting, but I'm happy to put my email address in if you have any questions. Is there a way to, is there a chat? There is. I'm going to put my email address in. Okay. Thank uh, you very much. Chief Hutchings, you, you raised your hand. Well, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt your meeting. I was just wondering uh, from Council Member O'Callaghan, I've never heard that term before, a Kafka trap. Can you, can you spell Kafka for me and what, tell me what it is? Uh, I'm just learning about it myself over the last few months. Basically what it is, uh, the easiest way to explain it is, well, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. So you got to do this, okay? okay. Give, give two options that are both bad, then you got to pick from one of the one of them. Okay. Uh, for example, instead of in, all of Thurston County has to do this or just Tenino. That's a Kafka trap because we okay. don't have to do this. We've got plenty of time here in South County to go over the issues and figure out exactly what we need to do. First and foremost, I believe, is to follow the laws that were on the books way before any of this other stuff was there. OK, way before uh, we started to say that, OK, you guys can stay here and we'll provide uh, porta potties and this, that and the other. We had laws. And those laws did not allow what we see now to, to perpetrate. Uh, we're a small community. We don't have resources that we can give like North Thurston does with all the uh, you know food and clothing. And when it gets really, really cold, where they, they can go in and have some place to get out of the cold. We don't have that ability. We don't have those those funds. And when somebody does come down here, they may spend, and it's, it's, let, correct me if I'm wrong, they may spend a few days here, but they leave because they can't get anything. They don't get food and all this other stuff that North County can, that gives them. But so that's a what- trap is, is, uh, is like a false logic. Yes. Like a, all cats die, Socrates died, he must be a cat. That's it. That's yeah. a cocktail trap. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. You, you're on mute. Hello. Well, I, I just want to say that I like the option of having our own money and keeping it here in Tenino. Um, I, for one, am going to go to the public hearing on October 19th, and I'm taking someone with me from uh, a business here in Chicago that's interested in this. So we certainly do. We don't need to. We just don't need to be supporting the whole county. I agree with John in some ways that we, but but I do think that we should try to do something here in Tenino as as a as a council here in Tenino. Okay. All right, it's 7.30. I really appreciate Ms. Dolio coming and joining us. You can stay for the rest of the meeting. It's going to be action-packed, uh, <laughs> or you can take off, if you will, and, and feel free to join us anytime. It's always a pleasure. Okay. All right, great. Well, thanks so much. I really enjoyed the conversation. And please don't hesitate to reach out. And it's very nice to see you, Commissioner Hutchings. Uh, I miss you. I hope you're doing well. So take care. All right, thank you, Beth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the... Tuesday, September 28th, 2021, Tenino City Council meeting. Let the record show that all council members are present with the exception of 
uh, Rachel Davidson, who's feeling under the weather and will need to excuse tonight. Uh, you want to cruise up there on the agenda there? Jen. Uh, I'm going to call the word. Call the order. Everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Uh, we have an agenda before this meeting approval with the addition of the excuse of Council Member Davidson. Mr. Mayor, before we get started, may I say something? Sure. Yes, sir. I want to apologize for dominating uh, that discussion. I, that, it's just something that's near and dear to me. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. No, your, your your passion is appreciated most of the time. 90%. Um, I'll give you 90%. <laughs> Move we'll approval of the agenda as presented. Okay. Thank Start you. We have, second. we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to approval of the minutes for the September 14th, 2021 Tonino City Council meeting. So moved. Second. Second. So seconded to approve the meeting. Minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. That brings us to the consent calendar. This is the consent calendar consisting of September 15th, 2021 through September 28th, 2021. Claims checks number 30138 through 30159 for a grand total of $94,863.34. Uh, no liquor cannabis license removals, re, uh, renewals, and excusal of council member Rachel Davidson. No approval. Second. second it's been moved and seconded are there is there any discussion hearing none all those in favor aye aye, aye. those opposed motion passes thank you uh we have no executive session that brings us to presentations we have none of those uh, we have no public hearings or proclamations public comments we may is there anyone in the public that would like to provide comment at this time? Please speak up, state your name and address. You'll be given three minutes. Is there anyone in the public that would like to provide comment at this time? Going once, going twice, hearing none, moving on. That brings us to old business and new business uh home fund discussion so we had a ding ding round lively, two yeah <laughs> we had a lively discussion in the work session uh the county has sent us a letter dear mayor fournier during the 2019 legislative session house bill 1590 was passed into law provided county legislative authorities with the option in addition to a ballot measure to impose by council medic action so without a vote of the people uh, which we know that council member O'Callaghan loves those, an additional 0.1% sales in use tax for housing and related services, a home fund. A minimum of 60% of revenues collected must be used for constructing affordable housing and facilities, providing housing related services, constructing mental and behavioral health related facilities, or funding the operations and maintenance costs of newly constructed affordable housing facilities providing housing related services, evaluation and treatment centers, the affordable housing and facilities provided, providing housing related programs may only serve the following individuals with low, with income below 60% of area median income, which is most everybody in Tenino, uh, individuals with mental illness, veterans, senior citizens, homeless families and children, unaccompanied homeless youth, persons with disabilities or domestic violence victims. The remainder of the monies collected must be used for operation, delivery or evaluation of mental and behavioral health treatment programs and services or housing related services. The Board of County Commissioners is considering the option of implementing a countywide home fund, accepting the city of Olympia because they already have their own home fund. 
And I, I think Beth told me they've built like 300 homes in Olympia through their home fund. Uh, and it is set a public hearing for October 19th at 3 p.m. or as soon as after the matter may be heard to hear from the public about this option. Further, the Board of County Commissioners would like to hear from your city about this proposal and request that you send a letter by no later than October 19th outlining your position related to the implementation of a countywide fund. I, I and this is from the county, I, I found it interesting that they did not mention that we could establish our own home fund. Uh, and I think, it, I think it, was, I, it was really nice of Beth to be able to point that out to us because I'm not gonna read House Bill 1590, 2019. Uh, but the, the options that I, as I see it, is uh, either we accept that they're going to do this, and I think they will regardless of writing them a nice letter, or a nasty letter, uh, kicking and screaming, no matter what, I think the, the the county and the North County cities are are very committed to doing this, and they've got their their own reasons. Uh, but our options are either we uh, accept that they're going to create the the countywide home fund tax, or we knowing that they're going to do it, and they would be taking our money out of our community, and then there would be it would be the, the board of county commissioners deciding what is best to do with it. And we have never successfully competed with uh, North County interests for home dollars. We are never successful at that. There's, as John uh, Callahan stated, there is a there is a well-oiled machine in the in the north of Thurston County that that speaks for these dollars. And we are not going to be competitive in getting those. So we could uh, choose the option of establishing our own home fund off of our one percent. Uh, sales and use tax. It, it comes out to about thirty to forty thousand dollars a year. Can't build a lot of houses with that, but you can you can accumulate over time. You can use it for rehabilitation projects, weatherization projects. You could use it to uh, do things for the the senior apartments. Uh, they're constant. You know, this quite often that they would contact us because they've got lighting issues or they've got all kinds. There are things that we can do in our own way to support affordable housing in Tenino that can look uh, how Tenino wants it to look if we choose that route. And I, I really do think, you know, you, you either choose to accept that the county is gonna pass a, this tax and they're gonna take the money, or we can speak for, we can keep it in our own community and do these things listed in that paragraph to the best of our ability. Those, those to me are the options. Yeah. Well, I think, to, do we, Oh, go ahead, Jason. Uh, go ahead, Jason. I was just going to say, I, I feel where John is coming from. And because I agree with a lot of things that he was saying in that in our work session. But also, I, I don't think we should just sit back and do nothing. It's unfortunate, but I think we should come up with our own, like you were saying, Mayor, and go that route. Yeah, the fact is our sales tax is absolutely low, and that's that's the way we keep it, and that's what. So this would it would have very little effect. And the thing about putting increasing sales taxes, it's not just our community members that we are then gathering uh, tax revenue from. We have a lot of people that, and I, I you know I feel the same way about roads. I I do absolutely support. Uh, creating a transportation benefit district based on the one percent sales tax increase, because then you're you're capturing everybody that comes in, uh, and the money the residents of Skookumchuck or Macintosh come in and spend, and you're using some of their support to support our roads while they're using our roads to get there. So I you know I do think that there's a, it is unfair that just our citizens support our roads and just our citizens support our police department. Well, the surrounding uh, community gets gets to use them for their protection and their transportation. Uh, so when you do attack the sales tax, it, it's it's I think it's more fair than say property taxes. So I mean, there's if there's a you know glass half full statement. Linda, did yeah. you have something? I'm I'm thinking we have one more meeting before the 19th. I believe it's October 12th. Is that our next meeting and 
I would I would say we should um, uh, pass an ordinance allowing us to set up our own home fund. Okay. Any other comments from the council? I would I was just just say that I hope people go out to the public hearing on October nineteenth and voice their opinions and concerns. Okay. Uh, Council Member O'Callaghan. Okay. Uh, years ago, it seems to me that the state came up with a taxing mechanism. For example, what you're talking about. Uh, right now, if we pass our own, plus the county passes their own, every time somebody from Tonino goes to Olympia, Lacey, or Tumwater, we're paying that sales tax plus our own sales tax. If there's, and I think there's a way, no. I don't remember for sure, that we that's can- No, that, John, that's not correct. You would be paying our sales tax when you're in the borders of Tonino. When you're Olympia, you pay Olympia, it's like 10%. Well, when you're in Tonino, you pay like 7.4. You're missing the point, okay? If, when we go to, uh, to North County, we're paying their sales tax. We are giving them our, some of our money because we are shopping there. Correct. If we enact something here, we will be paying a sales tax in Tonino separately from the county meaning North County. So when we go into North County to spend some money, we're also paying for their home programs. So we're paying for the programs twice. I no. believe that, let me finish. It I believe work that there's way. a way that we can recoup the money that we spend in North County to use down here. I don't remember for sure, but I believe that was passed about 10, 12 years ago. Linda, do you remember something along those lines? You were there. The only thing I remember is that a destination, the tax, a destination tax, if you're ordering something online, but I do not remember that. No, I don't remember any bill or any legislation that had to do with us recouping sales tax if we go to the store in Olympia to buy something that, that just because you live in Tonino doesn't mean that that well, you would, would that, get yeah. no no i don't it, it, that, that doesn't work that the destination tax, if you yeah. buy if you buy something like you go buy a hot tub at olympia hot tub and you have it delivered to your house you can pay tonino taxes and you can save a lot of money same with a car if you go and buy a car at a car lot and you go and finance it down at the ob credit union you can take you can say that you're taking delivery in tonino and pay tonino taxes and then the tonight and then the taxes go to tonino coffers too but John, you're not paying twice. When uh, you're up in Olympia, you're paying into their programs. When you're in Tonino, you pay into Tonino's programs. That's, but it doesn't mean you're paying twice. It means you're paying for where you're at. Yeah, you are paying for where you're at. I think that's you have, that's what but, John was talking about. What you just said: if you buy something and it's delivered to your house, you pay the tax in Tonino. Yeah, no, that's and that, I yeah, and I, I do I do remember that. That's not what I was talking about. It was called, if I remember correctly, it was called a tax equalization. And what it was supposed to do is if one jurisdiction had a tax that another jurisdiction had the same thing on, uh, you could you could collect the sales tax from the other jurisdiction to be put back into your coffers. I may be wrong, but I believe that's what happened about 10, 12 years ago. I'd have to, we'd have to take a look at it. Okay. So that, that, Bottom line, you know, I think we've got those are our options that that bill we've got. We will have plenty of room for what we want to do with those funds. So really, really, I, I think just speaking practically, not, you know, you know, not ideologically or anything like that. Just practically speaking, our choices are to keep the money at home and we decide how we uh, work on those problems and support what we want to support here. or uh we just stay passive and we and it's siphoned off and it goes into the county coffers and they decide so uh john council member o'callahan please if there is something about equalization or something do help us out do some research get us the information help us figure that out if you find it and think it's uh germane and helpable help helpful uh Beyond that, if if there's a if there's a council member that wants to 
pass a make a motion to uh, direct staff to begin drafting an ordinance to develop a home fund tax. Not me. Feel free. <laughs> I, I, yeah, so move. I would like uh, the uh, staff to write an ordinance. I'll second, Linda. Okay, it is moved and seconded to authorize staff or direct staff to uh, draft an ordinance to establish a home fund based on House Bill 1590. Is there any discussion? I think we, because it wasn't put up for uh, uh, a vote for tonight, we can make the a consensus to say, go ahead and write something up, but uh, to vote and say yes is a whole different thing because it wasn't. Uh, you, you guys, you guys are, you can vote to direct staff to do something. Uh, and then if it's an ordinance, it we'd have a public hearing. We would have uh, two to three meetings where it's discussed and, uh, and there would be an ample opportunity to uh, pass it, not pass it, change it, uh, destroy it you know there there's this is not this is not a final thing this this I allows can't. us to put it on the table for real we don't, we don't yeah, i think that's a do that and uh we we passed an ordinance quite some time ago and you were very instrumental and vocal on that of not passing anything the night that it's presented and this is presented tonight we can go ahead and agree to have something written that's not saying that we're voting yes or no for anything we're just saying let's see what we we can have written okay so in other words we're just giving consensus we are not taking a vote on this okay yeah i want to make it clear too that we're not passing anything john we're just making sure City Hall can write something up. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, okay, which I can direct them to do, or you guys can direct them to do through uh, through a vote, or uh, just point and click. I, I don't whatever whatever your flavor is. I just want to keep moving. Well, it's, it sounds like you have a consensus to have something written up. Uh, one one last thing. I also have a motion on the floor. So if, unless somebody withdraws their second or withdraws the motion, uh, if there's no further discussion, uh, I will call for a vote. Aye. All those in favor of directing staff to draft an ordinance? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Right, just so we can see what's there. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you for cooperating, everyone. I know that this is a this is a contentious issue, but we'll, we'll work through it and we'll come up with the whatever's best for our community. Uh, okay, next, one last thing, Wayne. Sir, uh, you keep bringing up that Tenino has the lowest uh, sales tax in Thurston County. Do you know why? Is it something you did? Yes, it is. I knew it. Moving on. <laughs> Find a different soapbox, John. Okay. <laughs> I've been 20 years ago, what would stuff. you do? 20 years ago, <laughs> IT bus this, flying cars. Okay. All right. You've had, you've had enough mic time. We're, we're moving on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this, I have too much fun right now. Uh, no resolutions, no ordinances. Reports. Uh, George Sharp, are you with us? You want to do the chamber report? Thank you, Mayor and Council members. The Chamber of Commerce is working with Tanano Arts in partnership with the Tanano School District, the library, the Tanano Garden Club to put on a scarecrow competition, a coloring contest, and also a fine arts showcase. And the information can be found at tananoarts.org. Also the coloring contest form can be picked up at the school district, at the different schools, or at the library. And the Scarecrow contrast form can be found on that website, tenanoarts.org, or it can be picked up at the Tenano Library or the Ironworks Boutique. The deadlines are October 16th to enter the contest, and there are going to be prizes including $21 wooden script as first place, $10, and $5 gift certificates to a chamber member of their choice. And that's the main things for that. Then our 
next tonight on chamber meeting will be October 20th. It will be in person at the Kodiak room at noon. That will be our candidates forum. That's the main things for the chamber. Okay, thank you. Uh, does the EDC have a report? Did you, were you able to attend the meeting Wednesday? Uh, no, I was at work. Okay. No, I don't have any other thing to report for them. Okay. Uh, museum. No, no report. Okay, tonight on community service. Mayor, 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 they've gone back to their regular fall hours, fall winter hours, which is Friday and Saturdays from noon to four. Okay. Uh, tonight on community service center. Jody, yep, thank you for joining. We've got a little couple of things. And with the scuttlebutt that went on earlier this evening, this just opens that up. So we are seeing an uptake with our seniors needing help. Um, and so this home fund, I think, is something that Tanino needs to really look at for the seniors. Um, and it's not just the seniors in the apartment buildings. The seniors are seeing a huge increase in their rents in Tonino, and we are stepping in to help them um, keep, feet, keep fed and to keep their fur babies fed. Um, and so we just, you know, just so that you know, we are seeing we are seeing it within the Tonino Community Service Center a little bit differently than those of you that are sitting on council. Um, and so I will be an advocate for those seniors that have no other means of getting more um, income because they are a senior. Um, and then having a $200 rent increase and they have no other place to go because there is no other housing. So, uh, but just to, just so you know, we're getting the, uh, we're, we're starting to see some larger numbers um, with our seniors within the community and not just at the apartment complexes, okay? I, I, I really appreciate your, uh, your comments. And, and yeah, I, I think, uh, you're, you're right that we can look at, you know, we, if we do do this, there, you know, there are, there are lots of opportunities for us to help our residents. And, uh, and you, you know, you know that better than any of us. And so, yeah, please, uh, that kind of, that kind of information, that kind of feedback is critical. And there, you know, we will have to study what is allowed by law with those funds. But I, I, I do believe, and, uh, Chief Hutchings, who's familiar with it, is telling me that it is it is very broad what is is used, what those monies can be used for. And there's a there's a lot of work that we have done with the food bank in this past year and a half, uh, using city resources and federal funds that have really brought them up to a, a higher level of service. And uh, and so you know there there is work that can be done here. So it's not you know it's not a bad thing. No, and I, and mostly it's that I would like to bring um, the awareness because these are the folks that are not going to sit there on Facebook and yammer about their, you know, woes or the fact that, you know, we went out and uh, didn't have uh, power for 15 minutes, so it's got to be somebody's fault. Um, but anyway, so I I just want to make sure that people are aware in the um, broad spectrum of Tanino that there is an issue with our seniors and with the housing and affordable housing. And so if this is money that can stay within Tanino and not go someplace else, um, then it would be utilized and it would be a a good thing if we could possibly do it. Well, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jody. Okay, that brings us to Arch Commission. Uh, 
Sorry, Mayor, I was muted. We're still in the process of finalizing two other candidates. So I'm hoping by uh, next month, we'll be able to present you a slate of five people for you to consider to be on the Arts Commission. All right, thank you. Civil Service Commission, no report. Um, I had some potential applicants. I have, we've sent out some applications to them. Uh, I don't think we've had any returns, so I'm gonna have to touch base with them again. I know that one of them was down at like a Pearl Jam concert for a week, so, which is freaking sweet. Keep going down, please, Jen. Okay, Facade Improvement Grant, Finance Planning Commission, Public Safety Committee, Chief of Police. Aaron Council, thank you very much for the trip down memory lane. I thought I was at a commissioner meeting for a while uh, when I signed in. Uh, the chief's recruitment um, announcement has gone out to several internet sites, WASPIC, AWC, I believe LinkedIn, uh, city website, uh, public safety testing, police one, and snail mail uh, announcement uh, for the recruitment for the chief of police went to every law enforcement agency in Thurston County to include our tribal partners. I expect that will generate some uh, interest. A lateral posting for recruitment has, uh, has been sent out as well. We're creating a, uh, well, my goal is to create a ready pool uh, of viable candidates that are all CJTC commissioned and trained ready to go. Um, so we have something from which to pull at a moment's notice. It doesn't cost us anything. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I forwarded to you about an hour or so ago uh, a copy of Thurston County District Court's uh, Interlocal Agreement, or ILA, between the cities of Yelm and Tumwater regarding services for District Court. Uh, they contract with District Court for uh, um, not only the trials, jury trials, a judge, a public defender, and prosecution, but the reason uh, I requested that and sent it to you, Mayor, is uh, for our city to look at contracting with the county district court for jury trial only. Uh, currently, uh, after talking with Rana and also talking with uh, our public defender, I mean, our uh, prosecuting attorney, uh, we severely lack jury services uh, to afford uh, people that do justice in court. And so if somebody asks, if a defendant demands a jury trial, generally we're, she is having to dismiss the case because we're, we don't have that set up uh, in our county. And so uh, this would be a big step up for Tonino uh, and for uh, victims uh, of of crimes in that we do not have in Sonino, we don't have the capability of room, sufficient room for uh, voir dire of jurors or sequestering, keeping them separate. Uh, Thurston County is completely set up with ADA compliance and access, easy access uh, for uh, the public. Um, what's really nice is they have IT services that are uh, uh, par excellence. So if there was a trial and we needed to have pictures, a video, uh, PowerPoint, whatever, they have that all set up as well. So we would not need to contract services, just my opinion. Uh, we wouldn't need to, to, to uh, contract services for prosecution or defense attorneys. If we have that in place. It would just be uh, the, juror, the jury, uh, and I'm not sure how the judge would work, uh, whether it be Tom Meyer or a judge, a district court judge. Uh, but you have that in your uh, inbox, Mayor. Uh, to take a look at it. If you need anything, let me know. I'm happy to help out, but it's entirely uh, in your court. Um, thank you for signing off on the Lexapol. Lexapol is a, is a national policy uh, and uh, law enforcement professional tool for policy and such, um, but they also offer training for police officers. Uh, police officers are mandated to complete 24 hours of training every year. And it's not a suggestion, it is a requirement and we are and have been compliant. However, through Lexipol, they offer uh, 90 minute, two hour trainings, online video trainings uh, on hundreds of topics. So not only does it help us maintain our 24 hours, but then officers are getting exposed to training uh, 
uh, in areas that we don't have the availability to send them to. And most trainings are, are not, they're all remote now. They're not, uh, they're actually not in, uh, in person. So this opens up the, uh, the pool and resources for officers to get training in areas they normally or typically would not have access, access to. And then of course you all heard, I'm sure the um, assault first degree uh, stabbing last Saturday evening uh, with a 23, 23 year old transient from a uh, suspect from Olympia that's uh, stabbed a 33 year old male in Tonino. And uh, the victim underwent surgery and was released uh, later that night, Saturday evening. And to answer one of the questions that came up, uh, our fire district uh, had an arrival time of a response time of about three to four minutes, which is not bad considering the time of night and the day of the week. Uh, and when they got there, of course, our officer was on the scene as the call came out, which is very that's, readily- uh, That's really rate. good on all parts. Oh, it really was. So yeah. officer, officer Aaron- How quickly was Aaron there? I'm sorry? How quickly was our officer there? He was driving by the church as the call was coming out. So it was, so, it was immediate. Under, yeah, that that's amazing. The first aid was there within literally seconds. Yes, he was administering first aid immediately. Suspect had fled. County came in, several uh, deputies came in and uh, cordoned off the scene and uh, attempted to find the suspect. And what's really kind of cool is that uh, Officer Lee not only was on the scene as the call came out, rendered first aid, uh, secured the the, uh, the victim and uh, AMR whisked him off to uh, St. Peter's, Providence St. Peace. Then a little bit later, uh, Officer Lee uh, found the suspect and arrested him. And Officer Lee recovered the uh, the motor transportation, a motorized scooter that the suspect had been utilizing to uh, flee. Uh, so Aaron did a, a oh boy. I tell you what, he really represented Tanano. Uh, uh, in, in his highest capacity, he did a great job. Um, and so I want to be sure that you, you know that. Um, and the uh, fire district uh, 12 did an excellent job as well in helping him out. Do you have any questions or any comments? No, nope, just want to say thank you to you, Chief, the Tanano Police Department, and Officer Lee for for all of that and and the uh, fire district this is why i will always support you guys because i think uh -huh. this is definitely needed in tonino to stay here it's just Thank one you. more reason that we need our own police department here in tonino it's great good job yeah thank, thank you. you thank you very much i'll pass the word on okay uh, good report uh, director of public works uh not present city planner building official supposed to be meeting with him later this week uh city attorney clerk treasurer kayleen it is your turn good evening everyone so um my report is that um the mayor and i and the department heads had a budget meeting yesterday to go over some figures and I am also working on the budget still. Um, also to report, and it has to do with um, line eight on the agenda, or number eight, line one on the agenda. Um, I got a call today from Kateri Wimsett, in, who is with Be That Prevention Coalition in regards to some signage to put in well basically anywhere where there are minorities present um there keep our kids healthy no smoking vaping signs um thought by the playground equipment ball field we can get up to 50 signs so it's however many signs we would like to put out she also brought in some window clings for the buildings um she also put me in touch by email with um melissa gonzalez she said that she has the crew to get the signage up and the materials and that she is hoping to work with the city to get the signage installed. I do actually kind of have, that's kind of a small picture here. Let me see if my camera will work. I don't know if you can quite see that, but that is what it would look like. It would have the 
the no smoking vaping sign and then a be that sign underneath it be that prevention coalition so i'm not sure if you guys can see there's that one and then there is the other one that she sent and it would be mounted onto the pole so again she dropped off 10 signs and the clings but if we would like more and if this is something we want to do and put in place again ball field to go with the thurston county ordinance that's been put in place they just think it would be a good idea to get the information out there so people know not to do that in the public places where there are children present and that is all i have all right thank you kayleen uh there comes the mine uh i worked i think 96 hours last week so i wasn't uh i wasn't much of a mayor last week and then as kayleen mentioned uh we did have department head budget presentations just recently uh went well so we've got some figures to start plugging in and then uh and then we start doing the the budgeteering and and, and start kind of doing the, the magic. Be that. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, before we give my be that report, did um, we went too fast on the uh, director of public works for Troy. Did he get the message I sent you about Sussex and Reynolds? About, about the street sign up? For, yes. Putting the street sign up of Reynolds? Okay, yep. all right. So my uh, report is only, uh, for the be that they have a drop a medicine take back event on uh october 23rd which is a saturday between 10 a.m and 2 p.m at the uh Tenano police department okay thank you council member lawton uh cip solid waste advisory board steady george that is you you muted yourself Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Our next study meeting will be the third Friday of October, and we're going to actually talk about housing in that meeting as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what is talked about at that time. I also want to give a shout out, Mayor, to the Tanano Garden Club, who helped the Tanano Chamber and Tanano Arts put up corn stalks on all the historic light bulbs downtown and some lights as well. We'll be putting corn stalks at all the entrance to the sound town, and they'll also be putting up some scarecrows at entrances to town. So, hopefully, yeah. everybody's in the mood for a great fall. All right, thank you, George. Um, keep going down there, Jennifer. Uh, it's not a school board, Rachel's not present. Uh, TRPC, that was Cutter. TPB. Uh, next month. All right. Public comment period number two. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to provide public comment, now's your opportunity to do so. You'll be given three minutes. State your name and address. Dan Fisher. I live in Chehalis, actually, but I'm the editor of the Tonino Independent. Welcome, uh, Dan. I actually covered the uh, school board meeting last night, and uh, they selected a uh, a new uh, board member to replace uh, Casey Shiwi, who's resigned. Uh, and uh, Rachel Davidson was one of the two candidates. The uh, current director of the Depot Museum. What is her name, John? Oh, good golly, Wayne. What's her name? I can't think of it right now. Jessica. Jessica Rush. Thank you. Thank Jessica you. Yeah. Rush Reeves, yes. Uh, she was after both she and uh, and Rachel were interviewed. They went into executive session and came back and uh, and uh, voted uh, for Jessica to uh, take Casey Shuey's place. OK. That is a great choice. Two great choices, so they're pretty lucky. Uh, that brings us to announcements. If there's anyone that would like to provide an announcement before John O'Callaghan starts giving his, 
<laughs> Please do so at this time. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. See ya. See you, Jason. All right. I'm Anything further? Any announcements? Yes, my turn. Okay, uh, go ahead.